Welcome to Supply Chain Horizons, our video podcast series that looks at crucial issues facing global supply chain teams. This video podcast is sponsored by Legility, a leading provider of supply chain solutions used by more than 1,250 companies in over 70 countries around the world. You can access this podcast and many others by visiting legility.com. Just click on the library link. So let's get started. I'm Corinne Bursa, a Vice President at Legility, and I'd like to share with you some enlightening conversations I've been having with supply chain innovators and industry insiders. Today we're checking in with Dr. John Slater, Vice President of Manufacturing Planning Solutions at Legility. John, thanks so much for being with us today. It's a great opportunity for us to tap into your experience as a practitioner, as an educator, and as somebody who's been driving innovation around optimizing production environments. My question for you today is really around how do companies not only evaluate the feasibility of alternative production plans, but you know what are those key performance indicators that help drive the greatest benefit when you're evaluating the quality of a production plan? That's a terrific set of questions, Corinne. I really break them down into some planning types of metrics as well as metrics related to how we have actually executed against the plan. The forward-looking metrics really revolve around Uh, how well we've done in terms of meeting projected demand. So those can be related to order delivery time, projected early or late delivery against a a future order date, or possibly management of inventory objectives. Are we keeping our critical components and finished goods above our safety stocks or below upper control points to manage things like shelf life? A second set of metrics is really related to equipment utilization. How efficiently am I using those manufacturing assets? So here's an area where measuring projected changeovers based on cost, based on hours, those can be important indicators of how effectively the uh, production plan is really sequencing through those various assets. We also have the ability to measure broad category of changes. How many times did I change from product family A to product family B? How many packaging code changes did I have versus material changes? And all of those are important metrics, not only from the pure uh, capacity utilization on the assets that we're scheduling, but they always also give us a good uh, view, really, on some of the upstream impacts on our suppliers Uh, in terms of switches and changes, or the folks who are managing the material movement on the floor directly. So those forward-looking metrics that we we break around capacity utilization, we can think of those broadly in terms of time used for different operations against the machines. We have material-based metrics having to do with uh, inventory carrying cost or excursions above or below safety stock. And what I found is a great way to bring those together is to put costs to those different kinds of operations. That really helps us when we're uh, speaking not with a factory manager who might be interested in equipment utilization or a uh, customer support person who might be interested in terms of uh, due date compliance with customer orders, but perhaps working with a CEO or a factory manager who also has a very major perspective on the overall costs of operations. And so those kinds of bringing together cost and capacity and material and efficiency capabilities really help us not only in evaluating plan A versus plan B, which one should I choose, but also at a higher level when we're looking at a sales and operations planning meeting to help us communicate to the decision makers in the organization what the real costs of those different planning decisions could be. As important as those forward-looking costs are, there's another set of evaluations that I think are equally or perhaps even more useful for certain organizations, and that's comparing how did we do against the plan. We call that plan versus actuals comparison. Uh, 
And some of the metrics that people look at are quantity adherence. I was supposed to make 1,000 cases, and I made 999. That was pretty good. Or people may be thinking about hours worked. I was supposed to be using 140 hours this week, and I ended up producing 148 or 150 hours and had to go into an overtime in order to meet my requirements for the week. For customers who have less, uh, less certain material consumption operations, me measuring against the planned material consumption and the actual material consumption can also be of value because that's an indirect way to get at waste in the overall process through incomplete conversion or incomplete consumption of those raw materials. Many of our customers who are in the food business or have very short cycle operations in their packaging areas are also interested in measuring how well did they do in terms of critical changeovers versus the plan. So if I've said a packaging change is supposed to take 30 minutes and I find the floor is actually spending 40 or 45 minutes against that, well possibly that might be an opportunity for retraining or an opportunity to improve how we crew the changeovers or possibly we are, we are under uh, estimating the true amount of time necessary for a changeover. So that kind of changeover compliance can also be a very good explanation, really, of why we may have missed on our product quantity or we've taken longer time to produce the operation. So these, these different measures really help us uncover root cause analysis of where we have difficulties and where we have opportunities to improve on that. Those measures really kind of get down to efficiency. And when I think about efficiency, one way to look at efficiency is how well did we use our equipment. And if that's all we do, we'd be driven as manufacturing folks to have nice long run, few changeovers, and possibly managing very high inventories with the associated cost. So if we broaden out that view on efficiency to really think about efficient use of capital an inventory investment as well as the equipment investment, that can drive out some of the older uh, approaches such as absorption cost methodology to look more at the true picture of the total cost of those scheduling and sequencing decisions that we make every day uh, as we're running our factories. Another area that's coming up uh, of, of interest in our customer base, Corinne, is really to look at the impact that our production decisions have on the environment and the world outside of our factory and outside of our customers. So we've developed a set of green key performance indicators to help us project uh, metrics on water consumption, oil consumption, greenhouse gas emissions, power, and oil consumption as a way to determine whether or not planning uh, in a different way could actually improve our overall environmental impact. For example, very interesting in uh, a factory in Europe, a plastics manufacturing factory made a simple change of, of coming in a little bit early in the day to start up some of the equipment and what they were able to achieve was a rather significant overall cost reduction in terms of power consumption by being able to get the long starting equipment operations out of the way before the rest of the facility began its operation. In that same token, uh, particularly in, in uh, processes that have high energy input due to uh, the need to control either high temperatures or low temperatures of operation, sequencing and sequence optimization can have a critical impact on our overall energy usage, especially the energy usage that's not strictly speaking necessary. And those are places where we as schedulers can make some significant improvements and overall uh, have at least some impact on the environment and improve our position there as citizens of the world. Well, John, now that, that's very interesting to me, just kind of this overall discussion about the, um, the top KPIs. So uh, you broke it down by, by cost or forward-looking 
uh, metrics, and then you talked a little bit about plan versus actual, and really the variety of ways that that can be measured, and then kind of that traditional sense of efficiency, right? If we if we could produce nonstop in a perfect world, what would that look like? And then I love the fact that these green uh, performance indicators or sustainability indicators are becoming increasingly important. Do we have the ability to view these things together in context so that we can really um, look at our performance from all of these different angles? Terrific question. Absolutely. We have a, a really a wonderful graphical display that we can, we can view multiple time phase key performance indicators simultaneously for various different run strategies. So a simple one might be I work a five-day week and I have to start uh, eight weeks in front of a high demand season versus I work a six-day week and I can begin producing closer to that spike in demand. Well, those are two very simple kind of planning decisions that I might make. Do I schedule overtime or not schedule overtime? And different dials are being put in place. Some things get better and some things get worse. And so the ability to view those various KPIs both in a graphical way, so line graphs and bar graphs and colorful charts to help us as people interpret that, as well as having the hard data underneath it, all of the, the numbers really that back up those KPIs are also stored historically in the database. So we can go back and see, well, what did we think we were going to do and what was our planning choices in April of this year when we were expecting a, a hot summer versus uh, the rainy summer that we actually got or that type of, of planning decision. So those are, are very helpful for viewing those different metrics, not only how they vary over time, but also how they vary with respect to one another because some things get better and some things get worse and really as planners we're looking for that sweet spot where we optimize across multiple dimensions of that plan. Absolutely. You've always got to introduce a little reality in the picture, right? You sure do. <laughs> and there you have it, a perspective on the top KPIs that drive the greatest benefit in evaluating the quality of a production plan. Dr. John Slater, thank you for sharing your perspective with us today. Thank you so much, Corinne. Supply Chain Horizons is sponsored by Legility a leading provider of supply chain solutions used by more than 1,250 companies in over 70 countries around the world. You can find all our podcasts at Legility.com. Just click on Library in the main navigation bar. And while you're there, we hope that you'll also download our white papers, which cover various supply chain topics. We also invite you to connect with us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. That's it for now. Thanks again, and please join us next time for Supply Chain Horizons.